Hi everyone. Today uh, I'd like to talk about decomposition. Uh, about a month ago, uh, a student asked, how long does it take for bones to decompose? Uh, and I really liked this question. Um, I happen to like bones a lot and I have uh, quite a collection. Um, whether friends have given them to me um, or I found them out in the desert um, just walking around, I've got quite an interesting uh, collection so I'd like to share that with you. But I think it's important to talk about um, how you might find, uh, let's say, an animal bone or something like that. Uh, wow. Sorry, there's a lot of fluttering going on over here in the chicken coop and I wondered what was happening. It looks like a little sparrow is trying to get in. Okay, so let's say we're walking around in the desert and we happen to um, find an animal carcass. Um, generally speaking, because we live in arid regions, um, the body of the animal will decompose much more quickly than the bones. So whether we're talking about humans or animals, it can take up to 50 years for full skin, organ, brain, um, ligament, um, tendon, rougher tissues to decompose. Um, now, if you're buried underground or if the animal is buried underground, that can sometimes take um, a longer period of time. But if you're above ground and you're um, decomposing um, and animals are coming uh, or flies are coming or beetles are coming, sometimes it can be quicker. Generally speaking, if an animal is, is above ground, um, 80 years or so um, for the bone to fully decompose, to break down to the point where the bone begins to fragment, um, it begins to pith, get holes, and it becomes sort of a more of a powdery material. Now, um, if you're buried underground, um, sometimes those bones can um, take much longer to decompose. Um, so 50 years to 80 years, generally speaking, for bones to decompose. However, if you live in an area where um, your climate is more humid, it can take less time um, because generally more humid climates um, or areas um, have more insect life um, and um, the decomposition process is much quicker. Interesting note, bones, um, Human remains have been found um, to be fossilized through um, either um, sediments. So someone is deceased, passed away, they're buried and sediments, you know, either they bury the people and sediments come and then the fine sediments um, and or different minerals or things like that actually penetrate the bone and it becomes fossilized. Um, so they can be thousands of years old, if not millions. Um, the Egyptians would mummify their dead. They would remove all of the organs um, and then wrap them in a cloth. Um, and so some of those bones or skeletal remains will still have um, fully, you know, fully fleshed out. You can see their teeth, their hair, their nails. Um, I do believe the oldest fossilized humanoid bone was that of, um, let's see, her name is Lucy. Uh, and she was found, I believe in Ethiopia, and she was roughly 3.2 million years old. Um, now her skeletal remains were found, I believe in a cave, um, and she had died, and then the sediments basically covered her bones um, and fossilized them. So, I mean, it really depends on where you live and where you die. Um, so, hopefully that answers your question. But I'd like to show you some of my um, um, fun bones. And I also found something today that some of you might be a little disturbed by, but I wanna show it to you anyway, cause I want to um, uh, do a little experiment. So let me show you part of my bone collection. Hold on for a second. All right, so this is my small collection of bones. Um, that I have here at school. I have many more actually, but these are the ones that I thought were most interesting. So let's focus in on this guy right here. This is actually a bone from a cow that Melissa and I found a few years ago out in the desert. Um, the thing I really like about it is that it is, um, I believe the femur and you can see this part of the bone right here. So the pelvis would come in and then that would articulate and help the, the cow actually move forward. The other thing I really like, or backwards for that matter, the, the other thing I really like is this right here. This is actually um, still a, a fleshy part of the bone. So 
Let's see if I can get closer. Right there. Maybe it was um, part of a ligament or some fascia or something like that. Um, I would guess just looking at this bone, and if we look over here, it's really sort of pithy and it's rough and you can tell that there's absolutely no moisture left. I would guess it's five to seven years old. Maybe it's a little bit younger, maybe it's a little bit older, but that's my guess. Um, this is actually really cool. This is a mummified pack rat. And sometimes um, when we're in these desert regions, an animal like this can pass. And so everything pretty much is decomposed inside its body, but its skin and hair are still fully intact, as well as its funny little nails, um, its little teeth, its little whiskers and things like that. Um, and I believe this was found here. He's kind of cute, isn't he? Um, now this is a fully intact javelina spine. Um, and you can see pretty closely there in this area, right? Like, let me get my finger in there. Uh, wah, right in there. That's actually um, skin and tissue um, from the javelina. Let's see there. And this is actually this guy jutting out right here. That's part of the rib. So when a when the spinal column or any part of the skeleton, uh, skeleton is fully intact, that's articulated. Uh, and here is the remains of the lower jaw. Now you can still see that there are some teeth. Teeth are one of those things that almost never breaks down. So you can find them uh, really anytime, anywhere. Um, and depending on whether or not you know um, about the animal's teeth, you can um, tell what they are. Javelina have these really, really cool um, canines here, these really sharp teeth. Okay, so here is a, another jawbone. I believe this is from a ruminator, so a deer or something like that. And you can sort of see the teeth there. It's for chewing and chomping. Okay. Now this is uh, a little bit gross, um, but you know how much I love gross things. So this is the uh, sort of, uh, well, partially decomposed body of a pigeon. And I have been keeping an eye on this pigeon body for, gosh, roughly two years now. I'm gonna try to zoom in for you a little bit. You can see that there's still some feathers um, and part of the leg. So this back part here, uh, well, actually, this is the front. This is where the head would have been. And then this is the pelvis back here. And then you can see it's funny little bird leg. I don't know what happened to the head. It was probably eaten by a feral neighborhood cat or something like that. Um, but it's actually really interesting to me. Um, and a little stinky still. And sometimes, um, depending on the level of decomposition, it'll have a really strong scent or you won't smell anything at all. Now, something that's really giving off a strong scent, and this might be a little disturbing, but um, I wanna do a, a, an experiment with you guys. So what I'm gonna show you is a deceased pigeon. Now, I found this pigeon, gosh, uh, earlier this morning, looking at it, I would guess it's no more than maybe a day or two uh, dead. Um, you can still see the eyeball there. Um, and you can still see that it's fully feathered um, and that most of its body is uh, intact. I am not gonna turn this pigeon over for you because that is where um, the highest level of decomposition is. I did happen to find some maggots and that was really interesting. Um, but what I'd like to do is basically um, watch this pigeon decompose um, and see how long it takes for the feathers to fall off um, and then some of the flesh and things like that so that hopefully in the end it will look very similar to that guy right there. So let's um, check the date. It is October 19th. Um, I'm going to keep this pigeon outside of the evergreen because it is stinky and it's only going to get stinkier and the flies are coming and they're part of that decomposition process. So um, we'll actually see hopefully the full process. Maybe I'll take like a time lapse video or something for you guys and we'll see. Um, we'll record how long it takes. But I did want to share that with you. Um, and then the only other thing that I have to show you is a bag of bones, a lovely bag of bones. And so um, 
this is articulated, meaning the bones are all together. This is disarticulated. So the bones um, have basically come apart um, because of all of the, the tissues that you see here basically have dried up. And then what happens is that the skeletal form basically just falls away. So there's more spine in here, um, part of the pelvis, some leg bones um, and things like that. Um, so I hope that was fun and interesting and that um, I answered your question about how long does it take for bones to decompose. All right, bye.